anxiety about the unknown. I could hear the steps walking up the stairs. For real, I was literally he hiding under the bed. black eyes, there was no light in All of a sudden, eyes. this huge object with lights was on top of us, and it made no sound. The anguish. She's probably just worried about the life that she just left, about maybe the house. The fear. It wasn't like the house itself cracking, but the floorboards next to us cracking. Yes, this happened. door I asked who it was and before anyone answered me my son asked me who is that lady just like that and at the moment my son asked who is that lady I heard a voice that said it's me hi and welcome to yes this happened Today we bring you Matilda's story, a Mexican listener who sends us from Italy several unexplained events that she has experienced throughout her life. Matilda begins with what happened one day, when she had just moved with her family to a new house in the city of Rovigo, Italy, about five years ago. I've been living in Italy for eight years and uh, I've lost loved ones while I'm here in Italy. It's been very hard not being there with my family when they need me. Five years ago, we had just moved to a house here in Italy, and the first night, my son and I were alone. And uh, my husband was in the office, which was close to where we lived. I don't have family or, well, in that, at that moment, I didn't have any family or friends that spoke Spanish or lived uh, close to us. Our new friends and the people we knew were all Italian, and we hadn't given anyone our new address because we had just moved. So my son and I were at the house uh, at night. He was playing video games in his room. I was in my bedroom getting uh, ready to sleep. And uh, I suddenly heard someone knocking at the door. So I went to the door and uh, my husband wasn't due to come home for another hour or so. I did think my husband might have forgotten his keys or something like that had happened. So I went to the door, I asked who it was, and before anyone answered me, my son asked me, who is that lady? Just like that. And at the moment my son asked, who is that lady? I heard a voice that said, so yo. it's me. And she said it to me in Spanish. And we, we don't know anybody who speaks Spanish. So I answered her in Spanish, you know, I said, and yo like who me you know who 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 are you and she didn't answer so when she didn't answer i repeated the question you know who is this and i was afraid um and, and i always say you know you have to be more afraid of the living than the dead so i was getting a little bit scared because she had not answered so i immediately thought if it's not my husband someone got in the house because yeah, there's a fence outside that you can only open with a key. So whoever was knocking at the door had to come in through the fence, the outer fence, which could only be opened with a key. And she had to walk through the garden, come up a flight of stairs, and then knock at the door. So that's why I was worried. Uh, someone was inside our property. So I immediately called my husband. I was panicking and I said, you have to come immediately because there's someone outside knocking out the doors and they're in the property. Uh, my son, who's four, said, mom, there's a lady outside. So I asked him, how do you know that? How do you know it's a lady? And how did you know before she even answered? So I kept asking, how, how did you see her if she's outside? If you, you know, he, he said, I just saw her. And he couldn't give me a logical explanation. And you know, obviously he, he was four, he wasn't being clear. And I asked him again, you know, are you still seeing her? And he said, yes, she's right behind the door. Matilda didn't know what to do or tell her son at the time, and she decided to keep questioning him to make sure he wasn't making things up, when her son revealed something else. It's an old lady, Mom. So as you can imagine, I just, you know, the blood went to my, <laughs> to my feet. Uh, so uh, at that moment, I tried kind of, uh, you know, distracting him, finding something to play with. Uh, just waiting for my husband to get back home and, and see who was outside. And finally, about five minutes later, because his office was really closed, my husband comes in the house, he opens the door and he says, there's nobody outside, there's nobody in our property. 
Everything is closed. The fence gate was closed、uh, with a lock, unless someone just, you know, jumped the fence. But it didn't make sense because my son and and what I heard was the voice of an old lady. My son was saying it was an old lady. It was very confusing and very strange. The next day, everything was normal. I went with my husband to a play. My son stayed with a babysitter, and while we were in the play, I get a phone call, and it was my mom. And she told me my grandmother had passed away,、uh, my、uh, my dad's mom. And obviously, being so far away and getting this kind of news is not is not something you take lightly. I felt really, really bad, and I felt I felt、uh, powerless being so far away. And the news、uh, was very,、uh, very troubling and very hard to take. And I immediately remembered that night before, and I thought maybe she came to say goodbye. My grandmother came to my home to say goodbye, and my son. When I came back home, I showed him a picture of my grandmother, and I said, "Look." She's my grandmother. I hadn't told him she passed, and my son immediately said, "That's the lady that was knocking the door yesterday." It's the only time that I can say I really think my son、uh, saw something out of the ordinary or paranormal. I really think it was my grandmother that came to say goodbye. I was not so close with with her, with my grandmother、uh, from my dad's side, as I was with my grandmother on my mom's side. But this recent encounter is not the only one Matilda has experienced. She has been experiencing things her entire life. When she was in college, about 15 years ago, a friend of hers died tragically. I've been through unexplainable things that don't have a logical explanation, and they have always happened close to the death of someone I know or a family member. I don't know if it's something psychological. I don't know. But what I do know is that whenever I've seen something or heard something,、um, you know, something that seems like a physical presence or noise or sound, it has always been close to the death of someone I have loved. Maybe it's a way of coming and say goodbye, or just you know make me understand I was important for them. One of the things that happened to me when I was younger, I was in school and my classes ended. Very late at night because I had the second shift in school. So almost at the end of the year, one of my best friends passed away. He was really young. He wasn't even 23 years old, I believe. And for me and my friends, it was a, a very big shock when you're that young, you know. So、uh, you know something terrible happens, and then the following days and and the weeks, you start feeling strange things. You're very sad. You're You're in mourning. You're also thinking about things when you,、uh, as you do other things, you're not really completely there. You're, you're, you know, maybe philosophizing or going through your grief. And something very strange happened to me. It hadn't been a month since he had passed away, since my friend died. I was still very sad. I still couldn't believe it. But, you know, the daily、uh, things of life were already starting to settle in again. I was getting. I used to this new normal. So that time I got onto the、uh, the school bus. I was going back home. When I got in, it was almost empty, and I sat on the window seat, and there was a free seat right next to me. And when the bus was almost close to where I was going to get out of it,、uh, close to my house,、um, I noticed that the seat next to me was still available. It was empty, and there was a lot of people on the bus, and they were standing. So close to my last stop, you know, there's a subway station, and when the when the bus stops there, there's always a lot of people that go into the bus, you know, wanting to take another route, and still nobody sat next to me, and the the bus was full. So I thought maybe the seat was dirty. So I looked, and there was nothing, you know, out of the ordinary with the seat. So a couple of stops later, I got off the bus and I started walking to my house, and I had to walk. Through the parking lot of a supermarket, and a couple of dark streets that weren't well illuminated. So I had to walk all the way to my building. There wasn't really a street. I had to walk between buildings to get to my building. So that day, when I got、uh, out of the bus, all the public lighting was totally off. You know, it was usually dark, but this time it was 
darker. And I was really afraid of being assaulted or something because it was quite a way and I was alone. So I started walking uh, fairly quickly and suddenly I felt like a sensation that someone was following me. But I was not afraid. I looked back, I saw that nobody was behind me, but still had that sensation. So the first thing I thought was that it was my friend or, you know, like sort of an angel that was taking care of me so nothing happened to me. So as I walked, I started thinking, maybe that's why the, uh, the seat next to me was empty. And I don't know if people could see him or not, maybe, but I thought maybe that's why nobody took that seat. So I started, you know, making this fantasy in my head that it was maybe him that was taking care of me. So when I finally got to my building, I stopped at the door and at that moment, I still felt someone was with me and, and I said with my mind, you know, if, if it's you, you know, in the name of my friend, thank you for coming with me, hey, I'm okay and I'm gonna go in, thank you very much. So I said, thanks. I said, uh, I missed him. And thanks for, you know, for walking with me all this time because, you know, surely something might have happened or could have happened and uh, it didn't because he was with me. Yes, this happened. happened. Matilda entered her house where her mother had already prepared a delicious soup for her. My sister was sleeping because she went to school earlier. My mom was tired from work, so she said, you know, here's your soup, I'm gonna go to sleep and I'll see you tomorrow. And I said, okay, mom, no problem. So she served my soup. I remember it was chicken soup with vegetables. And when I sat down to eat it, at that moment, I heard that from the from my sister's room, someone said my name, but it wasn't my sister's voice. And it, and it wasn't the voice of my friend either. So I heard this female voice, you know, so like I said, it wasn't my sister. So it was very strange. I got up, I was afraid, but I still went in the room and my sister was asleep. Everything was off. I turned down the lights. You know, I, I looked and I said, I'm imagining this thing, you know, so my sister got out grungy and, and told me to turn the light off. I went back to the kitchen, sat back to eat my soup, and that's when I was absolutely sure that it was not my imagination. Because my plate was frozen. It was totally, totally cold. It was freezing cold, like if someone had just taken it out of the freezer. And you know how with chicken soup, the, the grease kind of kind of clumps together when it's colder. It was just like that, like if I had just taken it out of the freezer. And then even one minute had passed, you know, between the time I went, turned on the lights on, no one and then came back, and it was totally freezing. My mom had just uh, uh, warmed it for me. Right at that moment, as I was thinking like, what happened, why is this cold? At the same moment, the voice said my name again. And this time it wasn't just one voice, it was a couple of voices and I, I couldn't say how many, but it was more than one voice calling my name. And they were calling me from my sister's bedroom where I slept with her. So I started screaming, I was really afraid. I started screaming for my mom, like desperately screaming. My mom was not asleep yet because, you know, she was barely getting ready to sleep. She came out running, what happened? She thought someone had got in the apartment and I told her everything. So my mom immediately told me, you know, relax, take it easy. Uh, I know she saw the plate that was freezing and I know she noticed it, but tried to calm me. You know, she said, just relax. Obviously, you, you know, your friend's death is a very big shock for all of us. You have to take it easy. So as my mom was telling me this, we both heard the voices and she was there with me. At that moment, I realized my sister's there. So immediately I I ran back into the room to try and help her if someone was there. So my mom and I went into the room and my sister was still sleeping. There was nobody there, but the entire apartment was so cold. And, and as I say this, I, I remember that cold and I feel it. So we woke up my sister, we went to my mom's room and we were there until we all, uh, you know, kind of settled down and relaxed. 
then we we went back to sleep uh i didn't even have dinner that night and uh and that's how it happened and you know eventually out of you know tiredness uh we went back to sleep after that night the visitor did not return to matilda's house but what happened that day marked matilda and her mother forever It was a hard experience because it not only happened to me, but my mom also heard it. It was one of the experiences that more frightened me in my life and I could not find an explanation for it. You know, the cold food, the voices we heard, so it was very strange. This story echoes others where apparently our loved ones come to say goodbye to us before embarking on their journey to the afterlife. Could it be that both Matilda and her son really heard something knocking on the door and answering her question? Were the voices she heard simply strange noises caused by some natural phenomenon, or was it really someone or something calling her from her sister's room? We will never know. Matilda's testimony remains with us as proof of what could be paranormal events that transcended her dimension to meet us at ours. What do you believe? On the next episode of Yes, This Happened, an artist looking to rent a place to create. When he opens it up, I notice that there's got had to have been at least 50 stairs going up. This is a pretty tall building, three stories if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we end up going up the stairs, which is completely dark and creepy to start out with. But you know what? I need the studio space. I was told that I wouldn't be let into the school, the graduate program on the side of studio, so I decided, all right, I'll take it. Finds out he got more than he bargained for. Turns out it's a 4,000 square foot warehouse. And I was like, whoa. I'm going to get this thing for 100 bucks, but I really didn't understand what I was getting myself into. Sometimes the good deals end up not being that good a deal. A horrific event he is made part of inside his rented studio space. I uh, start to hear this weird noise. And for me the noise can be best explained as a huge piece of paper being crumbled up. And I start to wonder, you know, that's really weird that there's a huge crumbling of paper that has been going on for several minutes. So because I'm a curious guy, I go to all, all the windows, look around, I go to the front, see nothing. I sit there and stare for a few minutes. I see absolutely nothing. Next time on Yes, This Happened. <laughs>